Thanks for listening to the Crypto Badgers. We are back. I am Max Power, joined as always by Matt, aka by Z Dips. And uh, well, today we are back for another episode. We're looking to crack the let's crack try and crack a hundred views today, Matt. I reckon could be the, the target. We're we're racing through the gears in the first few episodes, uh, so do hit the like and subscribe down below. By Z Dips, have you been slurping over the last week or so? Uh, there has been some attempted slurps, uh, Matt, uh, Max, uh, sorry, um, had a little go at Rune actually a couple of days ago, um, which was working out pretty well until uh, this morning's Hacker Rooney, um, which is a bit of a bit of a shame, but uh, was managed to get out uh, without any real damage done. So um, I sort of uh, got away with one there, but quite disappointing for Thorchain and, uh, and uh, the community there because they've been hacked now twice in a week. Yeah, one wonders uh, if the damage is done there. Uh, we, we, I think the price, well, we'll bring up the price. It's not what we were planning to do is talk about Rune up front, but uh, the hack is rather timely, 15% today. Um, that's, we might have even expected it to have gone lower. Yeah, maybe when uh, Europe wakes up, Max. Yeah, but it's been overall a good, a good week. On the market and i think last time we we spoke bitcoin would have been around 30k ethereum probably sitting uh, about 1800 so um there's, there's definitely been a lot more bullish sentiment around yeah well uh it probably wasn't the case earlier in the week i mean things are being being smashed uh i think on the video last friday i, I made mention that i had, had concerns over the the, the last two big unlocks for the um, grayscale bit, Bitcoin shares, which were to take place on the 18th and 20th of July. So whether that was the thing that impacted the market or the stock market um, coming off a fair bit, I'm not really too sure, but um, we were smashed earlier in the week and it was looking pretty pretty grave there. But the last couple of days, uh, it's looked pretty good, Max, and uh, it's quite pleasing to see. It'll be quite interesting to see whether or not we can sort of carry this drink through to the weekend because weekends have been somewhat of a problem over the last few months yeah so where are we at with grayscale at the moment uh pretty much all done and dusted now max uh, all all the big unlocks there was two big unlocks one on july 18 for 18 uh, sorry sixteen thousand uh um shares and uh the other one was july 20th which was ten thousand. and really there's just little little dribs and drabs now actually i think the whole thing's done and dusted so i think we can pretty much put that uh behind us at least for another six months anyway well, uh, credit to you, sir, because I do remember you you, you pointed out that uh, you'd be sitting sitting tight until after the grayscale unlocks, and, and sure enough, once those had completed, it did seem the market woke up a little bit. Um, they've been um, they've also released a bit of other news as well, which um, I've got prepared up here. Yeah, indeed. Um, so during the week, um, grayscale have announced that they're launching um, uh, an actual uh, DeFi fund. Um, so that, that DeFi fund is actually going to track um, Coindesk DeFi index. Um, so clearly that DeFi narrative um, has struck a big chord with uh, investors, major investors indeed. Um, and they obviously feel that there's demand for this particular market sector, even even though we've been in a bear trend. So um, you've got the article up there on the screen. Uh, it's quite actually interesting to have a look at um, the sort of allocations um, that that this particular fund will be having uh, a whopping 50% um, of the fund will be placed into Uniswap. Um, so that's sort of going to be the, the cornerstone asset of this particular fund. Um, Aave at, uh, at 10%, uh, Compound 8%, Curve at 7.5%, MakerDAO 6.5%, SushiSwap 5, Synthetics 4, and then uh, a couple of other smaller ones as well. So it's just quite interesting to see that things are still pushing along. Um, and it's quite interesting to see just, just the physical makeup of that fund because, um, yeah, 50% Uniswap, that's a, that's a big lick, Max. Do, do we assume that they've just been picking that up in recent times in the DeFi well, dip bought, or, are we, or have I, they bought yet? Or do, do I, I don't know? think the fund's actually started. They've, they've just announced they are launching it yeah. and they're going to be following uh, Coindex's index fund. So I don't think uh, Grayscale themselves really have any particular... Um, choice over the over the mix. Okay, too so much, they'll just be think. buying the actual index. Um, like well, they'll be buying yeah. those tokens that are in the in the index on CoinDesk. So, yeah, I mean, look, it's a, it's a positive thing, I guess. Um, you know, we've had a lot of the you know Grayscale sort of been a bit of a villain recently um, because of the, the you know the share un, the, the share unlocks that we've uh, experienced. But this is sort of uh, this is some po a positive bit of news from them because um, they do have obviously they've got their Bitcoin 
fund, but they also have a large cap fund as well. Um, so this will be the sort of third offering, if, uh, if you know what I mean. Yep, 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 I hear you. Um, what else have we been up to this week? We've also, um, we've also had you know, a few, few IDOs knocking around um, to, keep us, to keep us sane. Um, still in this, in this bear trend, make special mention, as, as, as it's turned out that I've done every week has been on the old ox bull um, we love the ox. We love the ox. I mean, uh, the price to me is kind of irrelevant because not looking to really buy so much. Um, we're very happy with the tiers that we've, we've got at the moment. And really, if you kind of ignore this crazy period when they had a, a coin that launched that went 1800x um, in the sort of height of the meme craze, cut that off and really the price has been kind of steady through this bear trend. And that's because they've been launching projects that um i guess are making money so um and the, and they really do look after their holders now i will actually just go to their site quickly so you can all see so come on max under pressure here we go um <laughs> it's a really simple this coins have stake for you already um they've they've had a number of projects in recent days. Dex folio over overnight um, just just happened. We're expecting a little bit of pumpage in that shortly. Uh, they've got another collect here tonight with Polyplay. Haven't actually looked at that yet. Um, and they've just had a load of projects. The wizard, the wizard, the wizard, the wizard has been on fire. Um, we'll make reference to that. I think in our ape of the day. So <laughs> the the reason I'm sort of mentioning it today though is because. Uh, some time ago, they released their OXS token, which has sort of sat idle for now. Um, but it's it priced at 30 cents at the moment, and you can get a top tier with 10,000 coins, so $3,000 for a top tier. And they do have their... Uh, if I can... Oh, no, I'm never going to be able to do this with Solid. I'm not going to try. Um, <laughs> They do have their first uh, Solana IDO coming up on the, via the OXS token. So, um, given the Ox Bull top tier costs you about twelve thousand US, the Solana one costs you about three thousand at the moment. So, um, it's certainly something to consider and maybe at least watch and see how the first IDO goes on the Solana network. They're not even the OXS token is not even on Coin Gecko just yet, so uh, it's got room to grow, shall we say? Yes, it certainly has, and it's going to be quite fascinating to see how this first IDO. Uh, what is it? Is it? Is it uh, which? What's their IDO? It's this evening, isn't it? Uh, they've got one on the Ox Bull token this evening, this evening. which is um, so, which so is many la so many launches. There man. is. They had one last night. <laughs> there's one again tomorrow, and then the, on the 27th of July is the first OXS IDO. So a big shout out to the team at Oxenbull. They've been doing a fantastic job, really transparent um, team. So will, so, so will this, this first OXS IDO, that'll be on Radium, is that correct? That's correct. So it all, all happens, um, you need a Solana wallet, you and you will trade, the, the tokens that will list will be on Radium or, you know, um, it's not, they could end up anywhere on the Solana network on any DEXs if people choose to put them there, but they'll initially launch on right. Radium. So, um, one, to, one to look out for there. What else have you been up to, Matt? Um, yeah, just, just sort of general research. Um, I mean, there's been a, a quite a well-hyped project that uh, we've both been talking about a little bit over the last... Oh, we're getting couple. to the crux now. We're ready to get into we're the get, crux. We're getting into the meat and potatoes, Max. Oh, you were ready for this. I, did, I don't know. Are you ready? Are you, is your body ready? Oh, my body is ready. I mean, let's just... Uh, it's the pulse chain. Everyone's talking about the, uh, their pulse chain. And Indeed. what a fascinating um, project. This is Richard Hart's project, uh, the creator of Hex. And um, it is... a Richard, if you have not watched any of Richard Hart's video videos, I suggest you go to his YouTube channel. They're quite entertaining, and uh, there's a lot of people that have. It seems like he's one of those characters in crypto where you, people just have a strong opinion. They either hate him or love him. Um, I actually personally can't quite can't quite work it out to be honest, because he speaks very very intelligently, but he's a dominant figure, and he's certainly in any uh, sort of. Uh, 
the conversations he has with people on YouTube, I mean, he is a dominant force in those in those conversations, but speaks very intelligently and um, <laughs> you, he's, he's got his role, he's got his swirling watches in the background, he's got all the chains and rings on. Um, the Louis Vuitton travel, he's got, travel he's, got, he's got the look, you would say, uh, of, a, of a sort of snake oil salesman, but um, he, he's, he's a very intelligent guy and, and the results that he's had, you know, with Hex are hard to ignore. Yeah, look, they certainly are, Max. Um, just to put uh, things in perspective, I mean, he's, he's well known, obviously, because of Hex. Uh, and Hex is really like sort of his version of, of Bitcoin in a way, yeah. um, sort of sort of making up for, in his mind some of the failings of that. Um, and people were very sceptical about the launch of Hex because, um, yeah, they thought it was a bit, maybe, maybe thought it might have been a bit of a scam or whatever. But just to put in perspective how well Hex has done in the last 18 months, uh, as far as I'm aware, it is the best performing crypto asset over the past two years. Yeah. So if you had have invested roughly a thousand US dollars in Hex when it launched a year and a half ago, that thousand dollars would currently be worth $2.5 million. It's quite an astonishing um, rise it's it's been incredible for the community there uh who are very very loyal to the cause so to speak um yeah i mean obviously i've got my regrets I'm, on that one Max, yeah so well, i'm just i'm just reviewing i'm just <laughs> reviewing uh, a message that now uh, i'm not sure this is in, is it possible that you messaged me about this in 2018 because late 2018 yeah, that would have been because I've got yeah. a message from you in 26th of July, 2018. I, I, haven't I, I can't done... remember when it was, to be honest. Well, but because it, it says hex, I can't think of what else it would be. Yeah. Where you say, I haven't done anything yet regarding hex, but I have moved BTC into position if I want to strike. <laughs> Yeah, fabulous, Max. Thanks for the reminder. What um, did you say? And a thousand dollars. Let's just call it. You know, a thousand dollar is I'm now. Sure you would two, have put a, a current market price is two point five million dollars. It has uh, actually gone up. And by the way, that 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 multiple. So it's basically two hundred and fifty thousand percent. That multiple is only if you did not stake the token. If you stake the token, you can double that. Yeah, and uh, another one at the start of. Um, so did you do this because you said here i won't be giving them eth but i will claim my free hex i, I didn't do it max <laughs> it's just i mean honestly it, it, our weekly vid max i think it's sort of become uh you know sort of stories uh, my, my side. i mean last week I, I i told the story of uh you know um selling effectively selling arve at 30 arve cents, at 10, well i did yeah it was originally lend and, and i bought that at 10 cents um but anyway at least we're able to pick uh, or identify yeah. some of these things that are... we may not we may not buy them but we'll, we'll yeah. pick them <laughs> indeed or we sell but them too I do early, want but... to say on hex an interesting thing and I saw um I've been going back this week watching a few cuz I didn't watch a lot of Richard Hard stuff before the last couple of weeks and I've been sort of furiously trying to get my head around um pulse but it, it, a debate that he had with Peter McCormick a couple of years ago Oh, that's and, a shocker um, that one yeah i mean peter just sort of said he lost his shit with that yeah it's um but I mean, Richard, his counter argument to, you know, Peter's claims that, you know, how can you have something that sort of just goes up? I mean, he was making the argument that Bitcoin's up over 2 million percent or something, you know, it started at, it started at zero and the percentages, no one thinks of Bitcoin in terms of something that's up 2 million percent. Whereas it seems with Hex, people talk about this. He, obviously, Richard has famously made the claim with Hex, it's designed to do a 10,000 X. Um, which sounds outrageous, but actually in the top cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin, I mean, that's been well surpassed. Yeah, it certainly has. I mean, you, you mentioned that Peter McCormack um, video. It's an absolute shocker. I mean, Peter McCormack made absolutely zero effort to look into what Hex was and basically just screamed that Richard was a scammer all the way through the interview. It was, it was pretty embarrassing as far as I'm concerned for Peter. I'm not a big fan of Peter McCormack, to be honest, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the proof is in the pudding. So we're here today. We've seen this amazing performance from Hex. We know that Richard's a controversial figure in the space. He speaks his mind. Um, he doesn't mind ruffling a few feathers in the industry. But at the end of the day, 
he's been right about a lot of stuff. Um, yeah. So, so fair you've play. You've got to, to respect him, that. I reckon you've got to absolutely. You've got to give respect. I mean, you look at Hex. Hex only, I think it was last week or the week before, hit an all-time high, high while the rest of the market was crashing. Yeah. So he's done something right there. So they've built a great community around Hex. And the reason we're sort of talking about Hex is it brings us really into the discussion around Pulse Chain because that's going to be Richard's new to token. Yeah. Before um, you get started in this, I'm just going to yeah. say one thing. For yeah, those sure. people who are watching who are going like, I don't freaking get this Pulse thing. I think <laughs> you're in the same boat as most people. And uh, we'll, we'll try mm. and sort of explain it a bit here. But I think the point to make is it's not there to be fully understood right now. No, there's a lot of mystique about it, isn't there? Yeah. Um, and I think that's what Richard loves, you know, just give out give out snippets of information without sort of giving the whole game away. Or any, um, pro or any promises. Or any promises, and, and I guess we'll we'll get to that. So, so yeah, so Richard's created created Hex, which is sort of his version of Bitcoin and a store of value. Um, and uh, clearly earlier in the year, and he said this publicly, that he has been very disappointed with Ethereum, um, given the, the very, very high gas fees. And, and it's really stifled a lot of innovation, a lot of projects just, and investors just can't afford to transact on it. Um, so he has developed what he believes is a, is a you know a, a, a better a better Ethereum um, called Pulse Chain. It'll actually be a hard fork of the Ethereum network. Um, so this should probably launch, I'm guessing, over the next month or two at the worst, I would think. Now there's been other forks of Ethereum Max. Um, I mean Binance Smart Chain for for one, and there's been numerous others. But where Pulse Chain is very very different from anything else that's ever been done before is that what they're actually doing is basically transposing all of the Ethereum network assets onto the Pulse Chain network at launch. Now I'm talking about all ERC20 tokens, NFTs, I'm talking the whole shooting match and nobody has done this before. And I guess in a way you'd sort of call these transposed tokens onto their network, sort of synthetic versions of what already exists on the Ethereum work. And I know this is a you know tough to get your head around, but it's gonna be quite fascinating to see like whether those synthetic versions of those assets on Pulse Chain actually have you know any meaningful value. I mean theoretically they should be worth zero, but will the market value them at zero? I have a funny feeling they won't. Yeah, this is this is what I find just so fascinating about this project. And it's one of the reasons why I've been doing my head in trying to understand it. And then you realize that you don't sort of need to understand it. And we'll kind of get to why, um, I'm sure, in due course. But the idea yeah. that you can copy a USDC, put it on to the Pulse Chain Network. Now, USDC, for what we can tell, are backed by US dollars. The copy of the USDC is not backed by a US dollar. But Correct. will that USDC that's copied have value on the Pulse chain? And if it does end up having value, I mean, what does that mean for the real USDC? I mean, does that, does it eat into the value of the originals? Yeah, it's, it's, geez, it's, it's going to be fascinating. I mean, is it worth 10 cents, it, five cents, one cent? Exactly. I've got a feeling it's going to be worth something. Now, there's, there's something comparable that we could look at here. Do you remember a couple of years ago when Tether um had their bank account seized by, uh, by i don't know sure who, who who by by officials and i think there was you know six seven hundred million that they had seized whilst that money was not in their possession tether never lost its peg really it still sort of traded as if it was backed even mm -hmm. though they'd lost access to those funds so i just wonder if sort of that's a bit of a a litmus test for what might happen here. I mean, I'm not saying that a USDC coin on Pulse Chain will be worth a dollar, but as you say, will it be worth five cents, 10 cents? Will it be worth something? Um, it's going to be fascinating. And obviously it's not just USDC, it's it's everything that's been transposed onto the network. So it's going to be quite fascinating. I mean, look, that that's not the only thing that Pulse Chain is really I think, about. I, mean, I think it's actually the wrong thing to focus on when looking at is. Pulse because it, that sort of creates a what the moment. It, may, it certainly got, it's what got me interested what you just, your assets are going to be copied onto the, you know, another yeah. chain. You've got them. How can that be worth anything? But it's actually the wrong thing to focus on. Yeah, it is, Max. I mean, that's just one thing. And, and by from what I've read um, and researched, they're not just going to be sort of a one trick pony in that respect because There'll be plenty of new tokens released on Pulse Chain, um, new apps. Um, basically, you know, any developers can go and 
launch things on there. So, um, you know, and they'll have their own, um, you know, AMMs and, you know, just like all other chains do, you know. So uh, I think it's going to be pretty fascinating. They're promising very fast transaction speeds, very low costs. Uh, in terms of transacting and uh, also a bridge, of course, between Pulse Chain and the Ethereum network to sort of uh, provide that synchronization. So it's going to be bloody interesting, Max. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, I, a, it's, I, a, it's a big experiment, isn't it? So it's if, a if, if, value, if value does get attributed to some of these coins on the, well, the PRC network, which is um, equivalent of sort of the ERC network on Ethereum, I mean, if those some of those assets have value and start being bridged across with Ethereum, that's going to be really interesting to see how the market responds to that. Because you're not wrong. And I mean, look, it's not like Pulse Chain are going to be starting from scratch. I mean, they've got that Hex community and it's actually quite interesting. You look at sort of the, the community side of it. I had a look the other day at the um, Telegram group for Hex, which contains roughly 29, 30,000 um, followers in there. Already within two months, Pulse Chain in their Telegram group have got well north of 30,000 people in there, just in two month window versus mm -hmm. the 18 month window for Hex. I think that says a little bit, bit, bit about this project because I think there's probably people out there that for whatever reason didn't like Hex, but they like this. So it's gonna be a really interesting. I, I think this is gonna kick off with quite a lot of hype, quite a lot of followers and quite a lot of users. Uh, in, in, in the first instance. So it's going to be really interesting, and, Max. And I think what makes this also interesting is obviously the manner in which funds are being raised or not raised, depending on how you want to look at it for yeah. the um, for the token. Now, I'll let you go in a moment into the sort of sacrifice, or actually maybe just if you want to touch on the, the sacrifice, um, we can see there's over $600 billion Sacrificed. Million, 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 million. Sorry. <laughs> um, and, and, and let's just let's just first before we we we, we delve a bit deeper into the sacrifice, six hundred million dollars has been pledged into into this project in just six or seven days. That is during a bear trend, and I mean, it's incredible. And with the promise of no returns, with no promise of returns. Yes. I so, mean, I so must admit, I broke a personal rules to I put a tiny amount into this because. You know, you got me a little bit excited, and, you know, and earlier in the week, I, I can't say that I understood it fully. So normally I have two rules. Don't put money into something I don't really understand. And two, I have a second rule. What is it? Oh, if things are really hyped and everyone's doing it, don't don't just follow the sheep. And I've done both um, in, in regards <laughs> to this project. Um, but really, I've put my money in to this without, kind of, I have no idea what the returns are going to be at all. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a really different one. And so, if we haven't confused our listeners enough by uh, talking about the transposition of assets from the Ethereum network to Pulse chains, we're uh, we're going to confuse you a little bit more now. So, look, unlike um, a normal token presale where users would pledge a certain amount of ETH or USDC and be granted coins instantly in a brand new project, this is not the way uh, Pulse chain is working. So. Users are asked to actually what they term sacrifice uh, a variety of token assets uh, with absolutely zero guarantee of receiving anything of fundamental value in return. Now, you can donate, you know, ETH, USDC, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Hex, Bitcoin Cash. There's a whole bunch of tokens that you can actually, what they term sacrifice um, into this project. And basically you get the US dollar of value of whatever the token is that you're sacrificing. So the, the, the sacrifice period actually ends, I think I think it lasts for 17 days in total. So there's still about 11 days to go, but basically at the end of the sacrifice period, and look, I don't want to go into the various bonuses for different people or whatever, because that really gets- There's heaps of videos on YouTube around that. There's tons of videos on YouTube, but as I understand it, right, at the end of the sacrifice period, and remembering you've been promised absolutely nothing uh, or, or no you know future returns etc cetera, etc cetera. as i understand it at the end of the uh end of the sacrifice period based on your level of contribution you will be given a proportionate level of what they call points uh and as i understand it those points will can then be redeemed for pulse chain tokens which will then get airdropped to users with effectively a zero value now, once the Pulse Chain token launches on the open market, essentially the open market will then determine the value of the Pulse to to Chain token. Now, 
I've thought about all this as to why they're doing it this way. Why are they asking people to sacrifice tokens and really making it acutely aware that there's no promise of any future gains, no promise of you benefiting from the work of others, et cetera, et cetera. Why would they do that? Why would, and also why would they airdrop something to you of zero value? Well, the only thing I can think of is it's basically to avoid the auspices of the SEC in determining that this might be some sort of a, a legal token offering. And um, if that's the case, I think they've probably done an excellent job in doing it. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, he's, Richard has sort of alluded to that in a, in a few of his videos. And I think he did a similar thing with Hex. Um, if I understand the original address, there is mystery over, even though we can all assume that it's his, um, there's sort of mystery around a, a sort of the central raise fundraising address. Yes. Um, which he did with Hex and now he's done it with this. There is no, we, it's 600 million. We don't know if Richard, it's not been disclosed how that 600 million is going to be used, which is quite extraordinary. No, it says, that, it actually says that they could do anything they like with it. I mean, this is an incredible yeah. uh, experiment of game theory. Yeah. I mean, basically $600 million. And this is probably, this figure is probably going to, going to go to a billion by the time all, all is said and done. 600 uh, billion the, committed on the promise of nothing. nothing. I love it. It's <laughs> absolutely extraordinary. And look, if it wasn't for the success he's had with Hex and the following that he's had, you know, nobody else could, you know, unless someone had a similar sort of reputation, you know, you, you can't just start something up as, uh, you know, Johnny No One and yeah. raise $600 million in six or seven days. It does show the strength of the community that he brings from Hex. Um, so, yeah, so there's still another 11 odd days. Are you able to go into the app, Max, or... Um, that sort of shows how people sac can sacrifice. Are you able to get uh, yeah, into there or not? Uh, I, can, I can get in there. Because basically, you, there's so many tokens you can sacrifice if you, you know, you Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash. Well, there's a lot of, been a lot of hex sacrificed, obviously, as well, which is leading yeah. some to believe. That so you can there. basically select the network. So it, 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 gets your, it gets your Ethereum address. You then hit the drop down button under select network. And as you can see, you can send many, many different types of coins. So once you submit, you know, let's say you'd submit one ETH and the value of that ETH right now is $2,000, well, then you're going to get $2,000 worth of points. And just on the topic of the, that point redemption, uh, for the first five or six, five days, I think it was, of the sacrifice period, everyone was on the same points redemption level, which I think was for every US dollar you put in, you got 10,000 points. Now, what's going to happen over the next 11 days is for every day um, that goes by, your point redemption value will go down by five percent so basically it encourages people to put their money in earlier yep. um, so you know today for example you know like if yesterday a dollar got you ten thousand points today it might get you nine thousand five hundred points and the so next day will be five percent lower rate again. and the current rate is now ten thousand well, there you go there you go yeah so yeah so so that is for any of our listeners that may be interested we're not suggesting uh because there's no financial advice here we're just telling you about a, a really interesting project that's coming our radar this week you know, basically every day that goes by, you're going to get less back. That's just how it is. Yeah. But a fascinating one, um, Max. Now, I've, I know you've, you've had a little toe dip in the water with this one, but I, I've gone a little bit heavier on this one. Um, I've got a warm, I've got a warm, <laughs> the, uh, uh, my, 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 inner the, no, the nightmares of, the nightmares of hex, of hex misses have forced you to put a strong yes. foot forward. Yes. Now, if Pulse Chain did a partnership with Aave, like I'd have to do like a treble, a treble ape. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's certainly going to be a, a fascinating one. As I said, I think that six hundred million dollar figure is probably going to go north of a billion. Now, just finishing up on on um, Pulse Chain, are you able to fire the Gexter up? Can you get the Gexter up for me? Yeah. Because You're using because, frog terminology. Yes, I am. It's rubbed <laughs> off on me. I, I listen to too many of his vids. Um, <laughs> Can you get the the, the, um, the the chart up for Matic Polygon? Because, you know, Pulse Chain's gonna be something comparable and I would argue that it's probably got a chance to be much better. So if we, we look at that there, what is what is their market cap, Max? Their market We're, cap is $5.6 billion. Billion dollars, okay. So so that gives us a bit of a yardstick here. I mean, if, um, if Pulse Chain raised 1 billion, so, so I'm sort of looking at that being the market cap, one billion. Do you know what I mean? Like that's yep. what investors. Are so paying. you're saying that's a price floor. I'm saying that's a price floor because I know I'm not selling my my tokens. Well, it'd be stupid to sell them for under that, 
unless there was something fundamentally wrong with the chain. Um, so, so that's sort of valued at six billion. Now, the other one that's of interest is ETC Max, and I think we talked about that briefly yesterday in dispatches. So ETC, How good I mean, dispatches. I love dispatches. <laughs> so ETC does absolutely sweet FA. I mean, do you know of anything that ETC actually does? I, I've, Max? I've never taken an interest other than you. I didn't even know yesterday until you told me that it was the original ETH chain. Yeah, there you go. And that is valued at something that does nothing. It's almost like a like the Seinfeld coin. Seinfeld coin. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's Seinfeld valued. Seinfeld coin. That is the gold. Sein, so, <laughs> the coin so, about nothing. The coin about nothing. I, honestly, you never hear about it. The only good thing about ETC is it's just on some of the biggest exchanges, but it doesn't produce anything as far as I know. And yet it went from seven dollars to a hundred and twenty. Yeah, so indeed. So, so that's what's the market cap of that one, Max? You that's just... five point, same five point. Five okay, so, so I look at two projects, which, you know, particularly ETC, which I've, I've just got no time for at all. And I think Matic, and we've had some issues recently as we won't go into those, Max, we've had some issues with the Polygon network recently. I'm not a big fan at all. So, I mean, I think Pulse Chain's got a chance to be oh, yeah, certainly as good or better. So the fact that people might, might pledge a billion dollars into Pulse Chain, I still think it's going to be very undervalued at that level comparative to those others. Yeah, okay, and so it, and it might take that, a while to get there. Of course it might take, but then again, we're talking about rich, a Richard Hart project. I mean, this could either come out of the gates and just sort of splutter along, or this could go absolutely proper ape droppings. And it could, just, do a, it could do a sort of internet computer style launch. It could do an apps. Well, well ho hopefully not their marketing the same because that was proper cringe. Um, but it, it could come out of the gates and go absolutely nuts. A lot of FOMO about people not wanting to miss out on, um, you know, on the sort of gains that, that Hex made. Now, I, I don't think it's fundamentally possible for Pulse Chain to make the sort of gains that, uh, that, that Hex has made, but that's not to say it won't do well. I, I've got a warm, fuzzy feeling on this one, Max, and I will be, well, I have bought it and I've, I've gone fairly hard and I will be holding it for no, the duration. No, you've bought points. Well, I've bought points. And so you, you see there's nowhere in their marketing materials that uses the terms investor or anything like that. Like they, they, they just ward straight against that. So they've been very careful. Is this you here? Uh, I don't think so, Max. Is but that have your a address? Crack, have a crack at that. So so basically this is, this is the site here that publishes effectively the leaderboard or, or the people that have put in the most money. So there's one punter there. Right? Is this the this one punter that's put in twenty nine million. million? Is this the guy that put in the one point five ETH? Remember, I showed you that one. Uh, yeah. He put in like twenty million plus one put, plus point. There you go. Oh, is it that one? Yeah, one point uh, five four yeah. ETH. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> cheers, cheers. I'll chuck in twenty nine million dollars worth of hex and uh, one point five one point five four ETH. <laughs> yeah. uh, just just to sort of empty the wallet out. <laughs> that's a classic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then he's added another 16. Oh, that was no, he originally had 16.1 ETH. Yeah. I mean, it's and then sort of he thought, oh, well, maybe he claimed a stake or something. I don't know. I just thought, yeah, I'm, just I'm chuck here. it in for good. But I mean, you look, go back, if you go back to that leaderboard, there's some serious, I mean, there's last time I checked, there was 30 or 40 people that had chucked in over a million. And it's probably yeah. more now. I don't know. Um, yeah, keep going, keep scrolling. Yeah. So you're looking at, there we you know, go. This is... 74 people have put yeah. in a million bucks or more so, on the promise of nothing on the promise of nothing oh, i love crypto it's amazing <laughs> so yeah so anyway we're not saying to anyone um out there to be buying this um we're buying it but um you know do your own research on it and but i just thought we'd, we'd mention it to you because it has been on the radar over the past week and i think you're going to find in the coming weeks it's going to get more and more hyped and you're going to hear more and more about it yeah no it's a I, i'm just i've almost bought an amount that just means i'm part of it and just i'm fascinated to see where it all lands because there's, there's a lot of mystery and the mystery story has got me hooked in so well done to richard um well i'll be working at mcdonald's max if it doesn't work out so. <laughs> brilliant well i think on that subject of working at mcdonald's maybe it's uh time for our apes of the day um now, uh, now, sometimes you know, in the crypto badges, it's it's just possible that we'll say something useful. And uh, I got to say, last week, I, the problem is, right, when you don't have many subscribers like we do, you've got to pretty much talk about your own wins um, because 
otherwise no one else will talk about them. And I will say that last week, I said my ape of the day was the wizard at 80 cents. And uh, today we got the wizard at $3.50. Now, full disclosure, I sold my wizard at $1.70. So I'm, I'm not smart enough to hold my own apes, but um, still pretty chuffed that, you know, my ape of the day has, um, is now swinging in the trees with plenty of bananas. <laughs> yeah, no, good call, Max. Uh, I mean, honestly, I didn't think it would go this high, but uh, yeah, maybe we should have kept a little a little moon bag. But uh, look, so often you see with these new listings, they 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 hit hit early heights and then die. So uh, I look at the end of the day, selling at one seventy ish. I mean, profits profit, especially in this market. Indeed. Um, but what do you got for us for the your ape of the day? My ape of the day, now for transparency, it's one I do own, not an enormous amount, but I will look to probably add more. Probably should have done it the other day, actually. Uh, but my ape of the day, or DJ and play of the day, is actually a oh, token called yeah. Ethbox. Yes, it's maybe they knew we were going to talk about it today, Max. <laughs> have, you been um, have you been leaking? Leaking, leaking, uh, leaking info. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so Ethbox, ticker code um, uh, Ebox. Um, so look, these guys, Max, are solving what I believe, and you know I like tokens that solve a genuine problem and something, that, you know, especially if they're offering a service or product that I, I think I might use myself. So these guys are solving what I think is a very important problem, um, that being the loss of funds when users accidentally send tokens to the wrong address. Um, basically, with the ETHBOX platform, users will never lose funds by sending tokens to the wrong address, and we've all done it and heard stories of huge sums of money uh, being incorrectly transferred to the wrong address. And then th those funds then become um, irretrievable. I mean, have you ever done it, Max? Have you ever sent funds yeah, to the wrong place? Yeah, I have. Yep, I have. It's, it's um, a horrible feeling. Yep. It's, it's, it really is horrible. So the, it's the, not, not only the loss of funds, but the feeling of stupidity as well. <laughs> that is very, very true. But basically, Evebox of their system system is extremely simple right so all users basically have to do is connect their wallet to ethbox senders then create a passphrase it could be anything so like let's say i was sending um, funds to you max max i could say okay passphrase is max power okay so create that passphrase phrase and then i would give that passphrase phrase to you the receiver you can then connect and collect those funds now if it turns out i've sent those funds to the wrong address i've entered the, the wrong address I can actually then cancel the transaction and resend it to you to the appropriate address. So basically Ethbox are providing like a safe escrow service for users via their smart contracts. Um, their smart contracts are actually being um, certified or audited by Certic as well, which yeah. are a very I'm, reputable well, I think on this one, you, um, it's something that you might say, well, if you're sending around small funds and whatnot, you may not use it if you're comfortable using crypto. But I can imagine if, if I'm sending, if it gets to the stage where people are, whether they're buying houses or cars, or if you're buying, you know, something with a significant amount of money, it doesn't matter how many times I look and check the address, I, I would 100% use this system, you know, to give peace of mind. Definitely. And I mean, look, in addition to just, you know, me sending money to you, the other service that they offer is like an over the, over the counter service. So let's say me and you were doing a deal and I promised to send you ETH and you promised to send me max power tokens, right? Yeah. But I don't trust you and you don't trust me. So ETHBOX can act as a, an intermediary, um, basically for trust. So you lodge the tokens, I lodge the tokens. They The smart contract sees that we've both lodged our tokens and we've both agreed to our side of the deal and it executes the deal, done. So I think there's, I mean, look, the, the applications really for this are, are enormous. I mean, whether it's just me sending money to you, think about the money that that like um, exchanges and things like that um, uh, whip around, yeah. you know, like that's huge. Um, so whether small transactions or large ones, I think there's a, a you know, a, a huge use case here. Now, one of the things with this is it's not pie in the sky stuff. It's not gonna happen in a year or two years time. Their platform is working and it is operation. Um, so their mainnet is, mainnet is now live on Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain and Poly, Polygon Networks. And I think as you can see from those screenshots that you've got there, Max. Um, this is the website, man. This is not- Yeah, the website, sorry. Um, it's a really simple application to use. I mean, yeah, any, look at that. Any yeah. idiot can any idiot can use this thing. So um, yeah, so I find it really interesting, and it's a, it's, a, it's a ready product. And um, sorry, yep. Go I'm on. sure you'll get onto this, but are the the token is sort of wins out of 
people using the platform as well, doesn't it? Yeah, I'll certainly get into that, uh, Max, as we sort of oh, go you're through it. the surface. Aren't you? You're We're just I mean, so deep I'm, into your age. I'm going to go into a DJ play today, I've got to go hard, son. Um, <laughs> going in terms hard of the, buying without knowing what it is. Oh, I hear. I hear. No, we don't but uh, in terms of the team, um, they're uh, a fully docs team and the information about uh, the team is on their website there. So that's a, that's a good thing. They're transparent who they are. Um, and interestingly, Box Mining, who you just had up on the, yeah. the screen there, he's an advisor to the project. Um, and as many of our listeners might be aware, he's a fairly heavy hitter in the crypto influencer space and, and quite well regarded. So I can only guess that if his time goes by that he's going to give um, ETHBOX a fair bit of airtime, which is obviously helpful. Um, I think on that page there, Max, on one of the other ones, there's actually a link to one of the, the, the videos that Box Mining did where he's interviewed the, uh, the founders. Yeah. So if anyone is interested in the project, you might want to watch that, uh, that video. So just in terms of um, the pricing of the token um, and the tokenomics of the project, they actually launched back in, I think it was the end of March in this year, and the, the token price pumped to around, uh, if you can get the Gexter up, Max, um, yeah, so it's pumped to around about 90 cents. And I went you to can the see, dollar of this, so. Yeah, well, thereabouts, yeah. So, uh, and it's since dumped to around 5 cents. So we're looking at a 95% retracement there. And that's close to the pre-sale and private sale prices that were available to original investors. So it's been a massive fall. And from my perspective, for no real reason other than just overall market forces. Um, so the market cap, if we can get that info there, yep. Um, so the market cap at the moment is only around about a million dollars. Right. Um, so do we do so the supply? I think coin market cap actually has a bit more on the supply. I mean, just... But the, the the supply is only sixty five million. So you're looking at only looking at a fully diluted cap of three million. Wow, which is nothing um, for a working product that solves a use case. Um, and look, look, you can see from the trading volume. I think it's trading at two or three hundred thousand of trading volume a day. So there's a bit of trading volume in it as well. So, but if we can perhaps go back to that um, tokenomics page, Max. So, what's our price at the so moment on this? Five point five cents. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so you can see the breakup of the tokenomics there. But if we can just go down that page even further, Max. Okay. So we can see here what the original investors paid. So this is a DuckDAO. Um, so the price launch the strategic was three point eight cents. So that's like the seed guy. So so paid Box three point eight cents. Three point eight cents. He's got three point eight cents, and his tokens are vested for twelve months. So he's only received, given that the project started in March, he's still got eight months of tokens to come. So I mean, the price today is only five and a half cents. So I mean, you know, you look at the private sale price. I mean, four point seven cents. They've now got just would have just completed. Um, all their vesting periods because that was only over four months and if we go down to the private sale uh which is 5.5 cents which is today's price so really when you look at it that way um you know it's 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 represents an incredible value today just on the vesting if you look at the vesting there all the vesting is basically done it's basically been released except for those strategic holders who've still got about eight months worth of um, vesting to go but that's only about another two two and a half million tokens which is so the rest are all really for the community and, and yeah staking. yeah well that's 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 the thing um so and you mentioned staking and that's a really important part with um ethbox you'll see the staking tab at the top there they've got an incredibly easy i love i mean we both love staking tokens um tokens that pay you to wait basically so you can single side stake your ethbox tokens here and earn roughly 30 percent per annum um, in rewards in ETHBOX tokens, which is very, very generous. Um, and that staking program is going to be continuing for four consecutive years. Um, there's different bonuses um, based on the size of your stake. So if you've got 50,000 tokens or more, which at today's price is only about $2,800, there's bonuses for having that many tokens staked. Uh, there's also bonuses for the longer you actually um, hold your stake in there. and important to note as well max that your stake isn't locked for any particular period you can remove your stake and rewards at any any time you like so yeah it's um it's quite an interesting one one million market cap three million fully diluted you can stake it you can earn revenue it's a working product i think the risk reward on this one is very very interesting um and i think well worth taking a look at obviously anyone listening should go away and do their own research and we'll certainly provide some links in the description but gee she's a very low cap market market yeah. cap max and uh i mean 
So we're both in this, and we're both a little bit underwater on this one at the moment. For just yeah, <laughs> I mean we. Look, I should have bought some more the other day, but it was one of those things when the market hemorrhaged. I just couldn't buy everything. Yeah. Um, but I think I we're, think I will. About, I think I will add to this. We're in about 20, 18, 20 cents here. I reckon we. Yeah, something we, like that. We got in so. But at least we went in at a dollar. <laughs> That's that is true. Um, but I mean, I, yeah. No, I like I just, we're, and we're staking away. We are staking away. If it, um, our share bonuses will be going up. So. Most certainly. So, uh, and also the other thing is with this one, just a final thing, it is a deflationary token as well. So even though that fully dil diluted market cap is 3.5 million, that in terms of the actual amount of tokens that'll be fully diluted on the market cap, that's actually going to go down because 25% yeah. of all fees that the platform collects for its services are going to be bought and then burnt forever. So there's a deflationary aspect as well. That's a lovely ape. It's a lovely ape. That's all I've got on uh, Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, well, uh, uh, you're always a hard act to follow. Um, um, I'm going for scale swap today. Um, Huge if true. I am going with the scale swap. Now, this one is is only been launched a couple of days ago. Um, we managed to sort of sneak into the to the IDO with some fastest finger first. Um, but this is not just a normal. IDO launch pad and it's why that um, I'm particularly interested not uh, the jury is still out whether it is going to be a long-term hold there's still plenty of mission to come which I'll which I will get to but its main difference is is that it will not it doesn't work on tiers it doesn't work um, in ways necessarily that just favor those who hold the most coins um, what they've done is actually introduced uh, I love the captures. You gotta love the captures. Oh, this is gonna be. Are you gonna get buses captures. or planes? Ah, oh, planes. Oh, I've got planes, yeah. Uh, excuse me. Um, well, that it. Yeah, nice and quick. Uh, within their app for the, for the launch, but the only what they've got to introduce something called scale score. Now, scale score will be determine your weight in the pool for upcoming launch pads and IDOs. And only one of the six elements that measure the scale score actually come down to how many tokens you have. And so some of the other ways that, that, that the uh, scale score will work will be how many of the tokens you've sold. So it encourages holders um, who don't sell any tokens will be weighted favorably in the pool. Uh, the, the, if you provide liquidity, that will um, give you a better weighting in the pool. Um, and also the interesting one, which makes it really does add a bit of, I suppose, game theory to it is if you don't sell the projects that list on scale swap, gives you a higher weighting in the pool. So if a project launches and you don't sell on the first day, as most holders tend to on these IDEO platforms and just take their little profit and run, um, if you do that, that will decrease your weighting and for future pools that they launch so it it does favor that it therefore is going to encourage projects i would think um who are looking for a strong community rather than necessarily your, your pump and dumpers so they've launched successfully here on the ethereum you do your transactions on the ethereum network but don't pay any gas fees and they've done this because they've done a partnership with polygon so you're able to often one of the issues for ethereum IDO platforms, obviously, is as soon as you're going to enter pools, you're going to be hit with a gas fee ranging from, depending on the GUI, from 10 to 50, 60, 100 dollars. So you pay no fee. Um, all you do is sign a transaction, and ScaleSwap will basically automatically process that transaction for you on the Polygon network, which I reckon is pretty cool. Um, in terms of the token itself, there is a lot of emission to come. Um, it's, it's launched with 1.2 million SCA tokens. So the initial market cap was 418,000. The price at the moment is 62 cents. So it launched at 35 cents. So the market cap is still under a million at this point. Um, but the, the private sale tokens here, there's gonna be around about another 1.2 2 million tokens released at the end of this month and in six months time 
the supply is going to be around 12 million. So there is, it is going to be a significant increase in supply, but with the current market cap as it is, um, I think the price at the moment is quite reasonable given that they haven't announced their first IDO yet. And I suspect that once they do that, um, they will attract a fair bit of attention. And, and I suppose box mining is everywhere. He's also um, had the team on for an interview on his show. I'll share that link in the description below. Um, but I just think it's a really, um, it looks a really professional outfit, fully docs team. Um, they've been ticking things off in their, in their roadmap. They've got a hell of a lot of partners on board and venture capitalists, which is a, sometimes for me a bit of a concern. Um, but they do have a couple of good ones. Rare Stone's good. Um, uh, Fractal, um, a pretty big deal. So they're going to, I would imagine, get some access to some pretty good IDEO projects uh, through these partners. So look at under a million dollar market cap, their IDEO was sold out in less than 27 seconds. They had a few issues on their launch, which is what I reckon has kept the price down. It, um, Looks a good one to me. Yeah, I tend to agree, Max. Uh, obviously, as you said, we, we got into the uh, we got into the pre-sale on this one. It was very competitive. I mean, I think there was fifty thousand um, people uh, attempt to whitelist, and only five hundred were able to actually vie for um, you know actual slots. So it was it was very competitive to get into. I think as well, you, you mentioned about the unlocks there. I mean, there's no unlocks for another month. I mean, all these seed investors yeah. and all these other people, right? Yeah, so I, I reckon there's a chance between now, given that it only listed yesterday and, you know, the next 30 days, particularly the next few weeks, perhaps, you know, if they can, you know, there's going to be no new supply come onto the market. And if they can announce a IDO or two, it could go bunter. Um, yeah. So and I think, one I, think thing I mean, that's why, but that's why we also bought, we, we also bought more of this token when it actually launched. So we were actually prepared to pay yeah. Above, and which is basically what the price is now. I don't think we paid yeah. any more or less than that to be max no, for, for the additional cents, ape. Yeah. So yeah, we, we've got a little bit of conviction behind this one. Um, and the other thing, just to be aware, uh, this is on both. You can buy this token both on Uniswap and QuickSwap, um, and it is worth checking the price on both before you buy because on launch it was there was a crazy difference between um, we were buying on QuickSwap, but the price. Um, on the Ethereum network was about 30 to 40 percent higher buying on Uniswap than it was to buy on QuickSwap. So yeah. um, I don't know currently. Um, I don't know currently what the difference is, um, but it's just make sure you do check that out before you purchase because you, you might get a discount if you uh, purchase on one or the other. So I think that that about mm. does it for my uh, ape of the day. day. Scale swap, see if we can get another four, what is it, four, four or five X on this, like from last week. I'll That'd be that nice. I, don't, I just don't think we need to be in a hurry to sell this one. I think we've got to let it play out. I think the announcement of their first IDO, I did watch their, um, their they did an AMA a couple of days ago, which you should yeah, be able to find out on that, YouTube. Yeah. We might be able to get that in the, put that in the description as well. So they were hinting that they had, uh, they had a couple of good ones coming up. So obviously it remains to be seen what they are. But I think you, you mentioned about the venture capital partners also, um, you know, having Arjun from Poly, um, you know, from Polygon in their in their in their frame as well. I think they're gonna they're gonna get pushed along some yeah. good projects. There's, a, there's an air of confidence about them. Um, yeah, which, I don't think we need to be in a hurry. No, but I, but I don't want to be holding it when the, those first monthly unlocks kick in a month from now. Yeah, I, th I think if so, something's got to happen in the next few weeks for me. Yeah, definitely something has to happen. I mean, it's I'm I'm on the fence as to whether it's going to be a sell or just something that we actually use as a permanent access to projects. Um, mm. See see what they're able to do in the next sort of two or three weeks. I suspect that they will once the dust settles on their launch. They, you know, you can just feel like they've they're, they've got a big team. They've um, seen that in some of their AMAs. They've got various faces that um, are working with them um, on this. I, I just tend to think they've got the resources um, to be able to mm. go pretty hard when they when they when they hit the go button. So yeah, um, tend to agree. They did. Their, it should be mentioned that their launch was a little messy. They tried to launch back in June, 
but uh, they had a DDoS attack and unfortunately for a, a launch pad token, their launch of their own token um, had to be delayed, which <laughs> um, is, is not ideal. Um, but they, I was, geez, I was, I was not bad on their uh, ideas. I, was, I still managed to sneak in um, on that first one. In, in even June. though there was a DDoS even attack. Though, even though there was a DDoS <laughs> you beat attack. The DDoS. I beat the DDoS attack and got in. <laughs> But that I was, we had, we were refunded. We had to um, send back our tokens and do it all again, which I think was the right call to not Definitely. sort of piss off the community. And so they refunded uh, people who were able to sneak in um, during that DDoS attack. They reset, reloaded, um, and then there was another small issue as they're about to launch, which they kind of wanted to do on the delay. Polygon. So it was a slight delay, but once once it launched, it was all very smooth. Um, there actual launch pad platform was v silky smooth to mm. actually make a transaction on uh, and buy the token. So uh, I get the feeling they've got some good good brain power behind that, this project. Just a final thing on that, Max, just so our, our listeners can get a gauge. I mean, the current price there you see, I think it was 60 cents or something, 60, 70 yeah. cents. Um, so I, was our buy-in price was 35 cents, wasn't it? Uh, that was in a pre-sale, yeah. Yeah, so it's not like this thing has just come out of the gates and gone absolutely nuts. Yeah. Um, so, we, you know, our, our first batch, I think we bought in the pre-sale was 35 cents. And I, I, think don't think, bought, I don't think it got, any, more like I don't think it got any higher than 90 cents. Yeah. So, and then we bought a much bigger bag uh, at about the same price it is now, right? Yeah. 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 So we shall see, but I, I, I do like it, Max. Yeah. A little bit warm and fuzzy over this one over the next few weeks, hopefully. Yeah, well, we'll be watching. Maybe it, it can maybe it can pull a wizard for us. Pull, can a, it wizard. pull a whiz. But will we hold? That's the question. Or will we just take our two X and run? The no. eternal question. No, I've got diamond hands on this one. <laughs> at least, at least for a few weeks. At least for a few weeks. I was going to ask you. We, 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 you know, we sort of talked about, um, you know, we talked about Pulse and Hex and some of the things that have been going on the market. I mean, what do you think? Uh, where do things stand now? I mean. Where's the market heading from now? Because we've sort of been teetering on the edge of of either well, you know, Bitcoin you... falling down or going up, or you know, it's sort of, we've sort of been in this no man's land for a few months now, where Bitcoin's sort of been thirty to forty k, East sort of been you know seventeen, eighteen hundred to twenty four hundred. Where are we going from here, Max? Are we just well, are we just going to muddle along, or are well, we going to have a major think, move um, one way or the other? Well, I've, I think we're going up, um, and I've been. I have been, I've been obviously a bit tense at times, but I've, been, I've remained reasonably bullish because, well, a couple of reasons. One, I think if you looked at an inverse chart of Bitcoin at the moment, and you said it just can't break, a bit like when it couldn't break 60, that sort of 60K, it couldn't clear that sort of 60K, 63K or whatever it might have ended up being the top. And after sort of multiple attempts, you sort of, we were starting to get a bit, thinking it, it can't break through. It felt like it, it had hit the end. I'm sort of feeling that that's the case at the moment with the market. I mean, it's had a fair few cracks at trying to now, at trying to sort of get under that, clear that 30K and break down sort of below 28 and, and hold it there. The market doesn't want to let it go there. And so I think if it, if it was on the flip side and Bitcoin wasn't breaking through a mark after repeated attempts, we'd be saying, well, it might, it might have hit that the top might be in. Um, so I tend to, that for me is a bit of a signal that we, we might be at the bottom. And the other thing is compared to how I felt in 2018, um, which was, I, you know, first got into crypto, say in 2017 at, at some point. And when it was kind of clear that it was over and on the way down, I was thinking, well, it was, it, it was fun while it lasted. It was a bit of a a passing fad and a bit of a ride to be and I should have taken some funds out when I was ahead, but I didn't, um, you know, and I sort of took a partial interest and probably didn't have a lot of inner confidence that it would ever come back to what it was. Whereas this time I feel like even if this goes on for a year, like I'm hanging around because uh, I've got total conviction that at the end of the day, um, you know, we will rise again. Yeah, look, I, I tend to echo those thoughts. I mean, I, you mentioned, it's funny you mentioned 2018 because I was looking at some old charts on that uh, just in the last couple of days. And, and what we've sort of, our present situation here, we've basically seen the same, we've pretty much seen the same movie before, Max. Um, we had in early 2018, we had Bitcoin drop 50% or more. We had alts drop, you know, sort of many up to 95%. Um, over, a, 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 say, a two and a half month window 
at the start of 2018. But after that two and a half month window, when a lot of the selling was exhausted, we got a quite violent bounce, a quite a violent rebound uh, in, in alts. Um, and I think from memory that lasted a few weeks. I'm actually expecting that to happen now or in the next couple of weeks. I mean, who knows that that, that movement to the upside may have already started as we've seen some sort of positive um, price action in the last few days. But at the end of the day, things can't keep selling down forever. At some point, things start to look oversold. And, you know, you've got to remember, we've, we've gone through an awful lot of, uh, you know, FUD and, and other issues um, that the markets had to absorb over the last few months. I mean, we've had, you know, obviously China banning mining. We've had Elon having a crack at, um, um, you know, the, the energy usage of Bitcoin and it not being renewable. Actually, just on the topic of that, Max, have you got that? Because um, uh, Elon was in that um, broadcast, the B Word broadcast yesterday with Kathy Wood, um, who's from ARK Invest and Jack Dorsey from Twitter. Um, they did a, a live broadcast. I mean, a couple of interesting takes from it. I mean, it's the first time he's acknowledged that SpaceX actually have Bitcoin on its uh, on its balance sheet, and also the fact that he is a, he personally owns Ethereum. Again, something that he hasn't acknowledged uh, publicly before. And look, I don't want to put too much weight on what Elon says. I think I think he doesn't move the market quite like he may have a couple of months ago. But it is good to see him changing his tune a bit. Um, so yeah, so we've had all this sort of you know these issues to contend with over the last couple of months, and I think that's a thing. Like when. When the market's hot like it was in april it doesn't take much you know bad news or, or bad you know bad news flow to sort of send things south i think we're now at the point where things are oversold so much that you know anything remotely good might send it north so we'll see we'll see what happens i mean look to be honest the general vibe around social crypto social media is that we're going to go much lower some people are you know projecting in the short term that bitcoin could go as low as 24k um, of course, that's still on the table and still a possibility. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I just, I, I never short Bitcoin anyway. Um, but I do think we're due to a rally. For alts to rally, we need to move in Bitcoin. But if Bitcoin could sort of go 32 to 40 or something like that, 32 to 38, a lot of alts are going to double or double or more. Yeah. So, but look, you know, it could go the other way as well. But if, if we do get a, a big bounce here over the next week or two, uh, it doesn't mean it's sustainable. So if we do get a bounce like that, I've got to be honest with you, I'm going to take a few chippies off the table and reassess because, you know, we don't know whether this is going to lead to um, a longer term bear scenario or whether, you know, any rebound is is going to be sustainable. So I think we've got to sort of play it by ear a bit. Some wise words, some wise words. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to say that I'll take some off the table, but invariably I'll probably leave them on the table after things uh, bounce up. Ape I've, into some more wizards. I'll just ape into some more wizards, probably, yeah. Well, we've even got some music on today. So we had the logo it's massive, last man. week. That's massive. And, uh, now we've got some music. So we are continually evolving here at the Crypto Badgers. Uh, but we do, we are keen to um, continue to build our little community there. We've got a Telegram group which you can uh, join. We're, we're in there to answer any questions. Um, our Twitter handles are below. We're still waiting on the eight for the uh, Twitter for Crypto Badges. Maybe that's what we evolved. Surely to. we can invest in a Twitter, Twitter handle. Yeah, pay, pay up and uh, get a Twitter handle. Um, so do uh, give us a like and subscribe if there's anything that we're right or wrong about. Um, we're happy to have some constructive feedback. But uh, until next week, I reckon we'll leave it there. Have a lovely... Lovely weekend in crypto, folks, and we'll uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers, Maxie.